Hi, welcome to today's video. I'm Tilly. If you have been to my channel before, hello, hi, welcome. It's nice to see you. And if you haven't been to my channel before, hello, hi, welcome. It's really nice to meet you. So the jacket is pretty much finished, which is kind of huge because I did not think I would be at this point at this time. And we're going to take a look at the different steps that I went through in order to do that. Also a disclaimer, I know my face currently looks like doggy doo doo. I work in childcare and for anyone who knows, childcare is extremely germy, grubby, um, and my face does not appreciate working in a childcare setting. Um, so I take breaks from makeup every now and then. And because something very exciting is happening next week, which I'm hoping I'll be able to reveal to you soon, um, so make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to know what that is. Um, I'm going to be wearing a lot of makeup next week. So I'm giving my skin a bit of a break over the weekend and over the latter half of this week. I don't really feel like I should have to do a disclaimer about the way my face looks. My face looks the way it does and it's fine. Just in case you thought I might be looking a little bit anemic, that's why. And without further ado, let's get on with the video. So my first step with the jacket was to crop it. So as you can see from the images, Deadlock has a very, very cropped style, almost bomber jacket. Um, I explained in my first video, if you haven't watched part one, I would recommend that you watch that before watching this part. I explain the decisions I've made behind the pieces I've chosen. So for this jacket, um, I knew from the beginning that I was gonna crop it. And I knew from the beginning that that was gonna be unachievable by hand sewing, which is what I've relied on ever since I started cosplaying. We're gonna be learning a new skill this time um, and we're gonna be learning how to use a sewing machine. So I began by taking off the stretchy part at the bottom. Um, this is on a lot of jackets. It's kind of like an elasticated cotton. That's the only way I could think to describe it. Um, and it sort of crops in the bottom of the jacket to like give it that classic bomber jacket shape. Um, I made sure to remove the seams and take it off that way. Um, by like carefully removing them instead of just cutting the jacket as I wanted to make sure I had as much material to work with as possible because as I've mentioned I haven't sewn with a sewing machine a lot in the past and I wanted to make sure that when I did make mistakes it was going to be easy to recover from them. So I pinned the fabric into place off camera. I would be the world's biggest liar if I told you that this went right first time because it did not. Firstly, I hemmed the like satiny material of the main part of the jacket as I wanted a nice clean finish um, on the jacket as much as possible. So I made sure to hem that first. It is a little bit messy as it was the first time I worked with the sewing machine properly and on this material, which I feel like is not the best material to learn how to use a sewing machine on. But now actual cotton is just so much easier to me. Like, <laughs> I feel like I kind of dove in at the deep end. So yeah, as I was saying, I hemmed the main part of the jacket, which actually went fine. It was a little bit messy, but all round, I'm happy. And then the problems began when I tried to attach the stretchy bit at the bottom. So obviously, as I mentioned, on the bomber jacket it sort of like crops the jacket in a little bit um so there's like a lot of excess fabric on the top and then the stretchy bit at the bottom sort of brings the shape of the jacket inwards a little bit but yeah i did remove quite a lot of fabric actually from the back um, but i still had a load left over and i essentially went in blind and just began sewing the stretchy material at the bottom onto the satiny main part of the jacket and it obviously did not fit i had about 15 centimeters of jacket that did not have stretchy elasticated cotton at the bottom um so i had to unpick it all um and go again and this time i made sure that i made a couple of folds i think originally on the jacket it was sort of like ruched very loosely um, and was like gathered up a little bit but i just believe i i believe i made four folds um which ensured that i could fit the entire piece onto the bottom of the jacket um and these folds worked and i managed to get it on well, that was the most stressful thing I've ever had to make in my entire life. Um, it's done. 
the sewing it's not perfect but it's cropped and th this is attached and it's not coming off um so that's good enough for me um i'm happy with it it's very messy considering i have never like sewn a piece adjusted a piece and then like sewn it with a sewing machine before i'm pretty happy with it i did have a couple of mishaps um, and i did not get angry at all there was no anger from me um and there's a couple of patches that i need to hand sew but it's done and i'm not touching it because it's fine so after that i began working on the additional details so uh the little hangy bits that are like on the zip there's like little weird parts of her jacket that like hang over the zip um they're part of the jacket but I don't know they're just kind of strange and then also like the shoulder pads and pockets i made a practice piece first which you can see me doing here to test that my plan would work um and then i began working on the real ones so i cut two foam pieces into the shapes i needed so one of them is kind of like a parallelogram um, and it's equal on both sides but the bottom one is like flat on one edge and then it goes up and across and then down. And then made some little sleeves out of material that was left over from cropping the jacket. I also made some foam pieces for the arm patches slash pockets so that they did like lift up a little bit. I didn't just want to use um, like stuffing material as I feel like it wouldn't be as like rigid of a shape because you can see it's very clearly a rectangle. So then I ran into a very small issue. So I was gonna make a sleeve for the shoulder pads or pockets, whatever they are, um, but I've actually run out of spare jacket material so I'm just gonna glue on what I do have because I have two so I have one for each uh yeah so just glue those on obviously fold over the edges nicely and then glue slash sew it onto the jacket by hand so as I mentioned I ended up just using glue to stick these on I used a spray adhesive which is why I went outside as when you spray that stuff in a confined space it is strong <laughs> So these are now done. The first one went a little bit funny. I sprayed on the uh, spray like too closely. So it was in like puddles and it soaked through to the fabric, but it's fine. I'm not actually that concerned about it. I do need to paint like yellow sections onto the pocket and most of it will be covered by that. You'll still be able to see some of it, but um, we'll just say that she got stained in battle or something like that the second one went absolutely perfectly could not ask any more from her um i'm just waiting for the hot glue gun to warm up and then we're gonna fold over the edges and stick those on nice and tight instead of fabric spray i used the hot glue gun for this as i felt it would be a stronger hold and i burnt my finger so many times doing this because my brain would just forget that hot glue is actually really hot um, and would burn my finger if I kept touching it. So I would recommend using protective equipment and not just your bare finger if you're gonna work with something like this. After that, I sewed up the sleeves for the front pieces of the jacket and inserted the foam. I ended up hand sewing these onto the jacket as there's lots of layers of fabric underneath the jacket on the inside and I didn't want to risk getting a little bit too excited with the sewing machine now that I was feeling a bit confident and messing up to a point where the jacket looks scruffy. For the purple patch at the back, I again decided to use hot glue instead of sewing through multiple layers of fabric. It's actually worked really well. It does have kind of a rough edge, but I don't really mind that. It was a lot quicker than sewing and I was basically sick of using the sewing machine at this point as well. So I just wanted to have a break from the pressure of getting it right on the sewing machine. I 
also added a purple patch on the front the same way. I made it a little bit bigger than the original design just to add a little bit more color to the jacket as it is quite plain um, and to cover the whole of the zip that was on the front of the jacket I used. And after this was done, I decided to put on everything I basically had just to see how it looked. So here's an update on the whole cosplay so far. The jacket's actually almost done. Um, surprisingly, did not take me as long to do as I thought it was. It's just a case of adding on the details now. I've mainly stuck on all of these fabric details just because I didn't want to risk getting a little bit too cocky with the sewing machine um, and messing it up. Very happy with the results. We have the like side pockets on the arm. But yeah, we have all of the detailing on the front pretty much um, that I could stick on slash sew on. And now I'm gonna start painting. I also need to figure out a way to attach this glove so that it's pulled up tight because currently it's sat in really like wonky like creases and it really like ruins the effect of it being a metal hand. Um, so I'm gonna figure out a way to do that. I'll probably do it with poppers, um, which will be like hidden somewhere like around here in the sleeve and then you'll be able to pull this up tight and then pop it in place so i'm hoping that will work because if it doesn't i'm not really sure what i'm gonna do now looking back retrospectively i know i should have painted these pieces separately but i'm impatient and i sewed everything together at the same time so yeah i decided to paint on the black accents of the jacket instead of replacing them completely with like the same pieces but in black or dyeing them as I felt like it would take too long and some more money to have to source that material that would fit the jacket and look the same and then also um, would probably push my sewing skills to the limit. Painting these pieces was so satisfying to do. It did take me quite a while to get quite a thick coat on to make sure that it was fully covered. Um, and there is teeny tiny little patches of random black paint on the jacket now. I have no idea how it got on there. I was literally so careful when I was working on this part. I have no idea how these little patches found themselves where they did. A couple of days later, after waiting for the black accents to dry completely, I painted the arm pads with the little like section of yellow that they have and the additional details on them. I also then painted on the little zip flap pieces. Um, I believe the lines on this are probably meant to be a seam, um, but again, didn't want to test my sewing skills too much and decided just to paint them on. As I also feel like that fits the characters a lot more as they are essentially like cartoons and like block colors. Um, so I really wanted to emphasize that and then that's the whole jacket um, with the front all painted. I have done the back as well. Here is some images of the whole progress of the entire cosplay so far. I have pretty much finished the top, um, but I will be showing you how I did that in part three. So stick around for that if you wanna see some more. But thanks for watching this video. Um, I really hope you enjoyed. I am really enjoying Deadlock and I'm super excited to see how she turns out. The more pieces I'm putting together, the more excited I'm getting. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Not only does it really help out my channel, but it lets me know that I'm making the right type of content for you. And keep an eye out for part three, which should be coming out fairly soon. And like I mentioned earlier, hopefully I'll be able to share with you some super duper exciting news soon. So keep an eye out for that. And I will see you in the next video.